So I was gonna do Ying next, but it seemed like a lot of you guys wanted Ash instead, and I honestly forgot about her when I said I was gonna do Ying next. I think Ash is a lot more fun and a lot more of a staple in the current meta, so we're gonna talk about her. In this video, the spotlight is on Ash, the War Machine. Now before we get started, let me go ahead and reiterate what these spotlights are about because there seems to be some confusion. The purpose of these spotlights is to take a character who's had some kind of uprising in the meta and explain why this uprising has happened. These spotlights aren't guides explaining how to play the character. If they were, then you'd see a title like How to Play Ash, like with my How to Play Khan guide. Also, I've seen some requests to do certain characters like Maeve or Zinn for example, and again, spotlights are for characters who rise up in the meta, not for characters who are barely there like Zinn or ones that are non-existent like Maeve. Just wanted to clear that all up. So for those of you that don't know, Ash rose up in the meta in the PPL basically out of nowhere. There were no buffs responsible for this like with Androxes or Tyra, no it just sorta happened. This character has always been able to fill a role that no other off tank could fill. Ash is a highly aggressive bully and yes, many other tanks can be bullies, but no other can do it to the degree that Ash can. Look at her kit, it is completely designed around filling this role. Her barrier moves forward with her so she can continue pushing while spamming AoE blasts at her targets. Her movement ability lets her quickly dive on an enemy while also getting off a nice burst of damage on contact and booping them into the air to either knock them off the map or make it harder for them to fight back. Her right click boop has the same effect but against multiple targets. Her ult also allows her to completely assert dominance on any area or any person that she pleases. No other character has a kit centered around such aggressive play. Now again, the character has been like this for a while, so why has she just now come into the meta? Well, look at the meta we're in right now. The two top direct damage characters right now are Leon and Cassie. You often see both of them in every game unless they're banned. These are two of the DPS's that Ash counters the hardest. Cassie and Leon are backline damage dealers. They sit at a distance and do their thing until some kind of opening appears for them and their team to play aggressive. They offer a lot of good poke and burst and Ash has the range to spam them out and make their jobs a lot harder. Also if Ash dives them with her dash, then what can they really do? Leon and Cassie can slide and roll back, but the further back they go, the more space Ash makes for her team. Cassie could disengage Ash away, but Ash could block it with her barrier, or of course be running CC reduction in her kit, so the knockback does basically nothing. The two don't really have a good way to defend themselves from her. They have good burst on squishy targets, but not really on a tank like Ash. Especially when you consider that Ash has a card that gives her 40% damage reduction for 2 seconds when using her dash. So if it's used to dive onto them, they're not going to be able to put too big of a dent into her for 2 seconds. Now I do want to point out that big game Cassie can easily defend herself from Ash, and that has been rising up a bit. But the thing about big game is you give up Cassie's early game anti-heal potential so you can't have Cot and Wrecker. You have to put too many loadout points into disengage to make kinetics effective, so that's why you haven't seen it completely rise up yet. And again, those two characters aren't the only examples of things Ash bullies and makes space against. Those are just the two biggest meta examples. Also, it did take a bit for Ash to get recognized in this meta. It wasn't just, okay, we're in this meta now, let's prioritize Ash. No, it took some time for them to discover her, and out of all the spotlights I've done so far, this is the only one I don't look at as being influenced by that trend effect that I've brought up in the past. Like as far as this meta goes, Ash getting picked very often and banned pretty often in the PPL isn't going away until we're in a different meta. It's not like Tyra's huge pick and ban spike that lasted for a couple of days. And yes, you heard right, in the PPL for a couple of weeks now, Ash has been getting picked a lot and banned a pretty decent amount. This is real, the character has become a real staple in the meta right now. Now let's talk about her talents and her best maps. So Ash has two talents that get picked for the most part, Battering Ram and Slug. Now these two are situational. Battering Ram is what I see getting picked more often because it gives her the safe dash and it allows her to keep the AoE spread on her gun, which is very valuable on certain maps. 
But with Battering Ram, it also depends on how many things there are to take you out of your dash, because if you're constantly getting your dash cancelled by the enemy, the talent gets no value. Makoa can do it with his hook, Khan can do it with his commander's grab, Torv with his silence, Anara with her cripple, but in this meta, Mother's Grace is valued way more than the cripple. Grover with his cripple, but he's banned in PPL and most coordinated play for crashing people's games, so you only see him in public games. Furia and Damba could do it with their stuns, but it's not incredibly likely to happen. Glenos also can with his grip, but Glenos has heavily fallen out of the meta, and that's something I need to touch on, I just haven't had the right video to talk about it in yet. I'll probably bring it up in the Ying Spotlight. Also, real quick, guys, if you're a support player and you're looking for really good info and content centered around supports, go subscribe to Vex, the pro support player for Team G2. He puts out a lot of really good and informational videos centered around supports. It's super cool to see a pro player making YouTube content consistently like that. It's something we really need in the Paladins community and I'm really glad he's stepping up and doing it. So please, pause this video right now and go subscribe to that man. I'll link him in the description below to make it easier for you guys. Anyway, back to Ash and Battering Ram. If there are multiple things that can take you out of Battering Ram, you're probably not going to want to take it. If there's only one, you can work around it. Like I work around Makoa Hook with Battering Ram all the time. I bait it out or block it with my barrier. However, if Makoa has Torvald with him, for example, I could bait or block the hook, and then Torv silences my dash. The more counters there are, the less likely you are to get value out of the talent. As for Slug, Slug gives you a lot of range, so it's obviously really going to be good on those maps with longer sight lines, like Ascension Peak for example, one of her best maps in a big part thanks to Slug. In the PPL, I have never seen her not picked or not banned on that map. It's either one or the other, they never leave her out on the bench on that map. Slug is also a good pick against triple DPS because triple DPS plays safe and plays back until they get a pick and Slug allows you to get all this easy free poke on them, makes it a lot harder on them. Some people say Fortress Breaker is good, I don't really recommend it personally. Barrier talents get countered by Wrecker in every game, while Slug and Battering Ram don't. They're reliable bonuses that are often way more impactful. I brought up a second ago how Peak is a really good map for her. There's also Frog Isle, which is probably her best map for multiple reasons. One, her boops get a lot of value on that map since half of it is a cliff. Then two, people play very grouped up on that map so her AoE can easily spread cot and bully multiple people. Like on Frog Isle, there's this area called Danger, and Danger is that grassy area that's between the point and the giant frog statue that's looking off the cliff. The tight ramps next to the cliff, leading up to the enemy's high ground, is also danger. Whether Ash is defending or pushing danger doesn't really matter, her barrier covers that whole ramp since it's a very tight space, and since it's a tight space her AoE is hitting anyone who is defending or pushing that area. Also, like I said, her boops get a lot of value and if the enemy plays danger just a bit wrong, they're getting booped off the cliff. Slug also gets picked on this map too, it just depends on a lot of stuff like I said before. Are they playing triple DPS or are there a lot of things that can cancel your dash or do they have a lot of poke that Slug helps you fight back against? Paladins is one big pot of situational picks so I can never explain every little thing in detail even though I want to. I do also want to mention that you could pick Ash on any map if the situation calls for it. There isn't really a map I'd say is bad for her. I mean, Timbermill is hard on nearly any tank, but they still get picked on it. There's no real way around that. So, I've talked a lot about PPL and coordinated play, but what about in public games? Is there a difference there? Not really, honestly. When it comes to Ash, everything still works the same. You're gonna want to be picking her to pressure, bully, and make space. More often than not, you're not gonna be first picking her. The character is mainly a second rotation and beyond pick. When it comes to banning her, well like I said, Peak and Frog are two of her best maps, so you could ban her there. You could also ban her if you're looking to pick up things that Ash counters, you know, like Cassie or Leon. I do want to say that telling people when to pick or ban things is hard because drafting is so complex, but in public games, drafting often isn't really treated like that. It's mainly just picking things that are good, things you're comfortable with, and playing better than the other team for the most part. 
it's a big difference from coordinated play where drafting correctly or not could decide a game. Now I've gotten some complaints about not explaining how to build a character in these spotlights. Again, this isn't really an advanced guide on how to build them or play them or anything, but I can point you guys in the right direction. Of course you want a loadout to counter CC with Indomitable in it as well as a loadout without it. Heavy Metal for base health is something you also want to run. War Machine is a big thing on her as well. Vanguard is another good one. And for filler cards, you could run Gatecrasher or Trebuchet, whatever, I have no idea how to pronounce it. Those two are both good ones. Basically, you want something like the two builds you just saw. Anyway, that's the spotlight on Ash. Hopefully I explained things alright and got a lot of info out to you guys. Either Ying or Talus is coming next. It'll probably be Ying though, because I haven't really seen a lot of Talus. Anyway, that's pretty much it guys. I want to thank you all for watching. I very much appreciate it, and I'm going to see you guys later. Bye.